For some people, that adjustment period can be really tough, but I would say everyone should use vitamin C. So that would be one instance in which I say, you know, you can kind of switch up the steps of the skincare routine. Hey everyone, it's Dr. Joyce, board certified dermatologist. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to dial it back and think back to the basics of skincare, how to build a simple yet effective skincare routine. This question comes up a lot on my channels because I think there's just so many products out there. There's a lot of misinformation as well. And a lot of people get the wrong idea that to have a good skincare routine, you need to be buying like 20 different products and have these 12 step skincare routines. Let me put that idea to rest. That is not necessary. And in fact, using too many products can actually damage your skin barrier and cause you to have some redness and irritation. So today we're going to talk about the building blocks of a good solid skincare routine and things you should think about as you are building a skincare routine for you. Let's get into it. Before we dive into how to build a skincare routine, I want to quickly go over your skin type. And this is important because knowing your skin type can really dictate what types of products you wanna to buy to personalize your routine. The different skin types are oily, dry, combination, and I like to throw sensitive in there as well because that has some specific considerations for product purchase. One way for you to tell what type of skin you have is to wash your face, cleanse it with water and a cleanser, and then leave it for a few minutes. And before you put on any product, take a look and feel of your skin. Are you dry and flaky? Do you have little dry patches all over your face? Or do you notice that even after a few minutes, you start to produce oil and your face looks like there's a shine to it? Or if you have combination skin, you have dry patches on the cheeks, but in this T-zone, you get oil production. Or do you have sensitive skin, meaning your skin is really prone to redness, stinging when you try actives like acids and retinoids and sometimes even vitamin C? Are you prone to sensitivities with different products? Aside from knowing your skin type, another really important thing is to know what skin concerns you have. Instead of buying products that are viral on social media, you should really choose products that are tailored to your specific skin concern. Examples of these include acne, rosacea, dark spots or hyperpigmentation, or if you're noticing a lot of signs of aging, you can look for products that specifically target signs of aging, like fine lines and wrinkles, or even think about things that will help with volume loss, etc. So keeping all of this in mind, let's move forth into building a really great and very basic skincare routine together. I'll start with the morning routine. So this is your AM routine. Step one is always an optional cleanse. And I say optional because unless you have oily skin and it's very shiny in the morning, you don't really have to wash your face with a cleanser in the morning. This is really up to you. I usually just splash some cold water on my face and move forwards with my routine. However, if you feel like a lot of the products you used the night before are very heavy on your face, or if you produce a lot of oil, then go ahead and use your favorite cleanser in the morning. Morning. After your optional cleanse, then comes step two, which is treating your specific skin concern. Now, I alluded to this briefly before, and I have many more videos that go in depth into each of these concerns. For example, if you have acne, this is where you'll use your anti-acne medication. Like if you have a special salicylic acid or azelaic acid preparation, if you have a topical prescription product, like a topical antibiotic, if you have Winlevy, which is a topical androgen blocker, it's a form of topical spironolactone, or if you have a benzoyl peroxide type gel, this is where you would use it. If you have rosacea, this is where you would use your rosacea medications, like your azelaic acid, your topical ivermectin, your topical metronidine, is all. And if you struggle with dark spots, this is where you would use those active ingredients to target dark spots like vitamin C, kojic acid, licorice, hydroquinone, etc, etc. So there's a lot of different options. All this is to say that step two is where you really use your active to treat your skincare concerns and prescriptions go here as well. 
Step three that I like for the mornings is to incorporate an antioxidant like vitamin C. I'm a huge fan of vitamin C, and if you don't know much about vitamin C, please check out my vitamin C video here where I go over everything you need to know about vitamin C and my personal favorite vitamin C. In a nutshell, vitamin C is a very potent antioxidant that helps to neutralize free radical damage from the sun. It's also an important cofactor in collagen production, and it also acts as a brightener to help fade some of those dark spots. So it really does a lot of different things. Now I would use a vitamin C serum or a vitamin C moisturizer at this step of the routine. Obviously, if you already use vitamin C in step two, you don't have to use another vitamin C in step three, but I would say everyone should use vitamin C and the different types of vitamin C that you choose should be one that jives well with your skin type. And I go over that in my previous video. After vitamin C is your hydration step. So if you are dry, this is where you would use your serum, plus a moisturizer, serum is optional. Even moisturizer is optional, I would say. It's only if you have dry skin. <laughs> so during winter time, you can layer on an extra moisturizer or serum. But if you have oily skin or combination skin and it's summer, you don't necessarily need to use a moisturizer in your AM routine. After your optional moisturizer then is your sunscreen. I have so many different videos from, on sunscreen. Here's one that I made recently on viral sunscreens and here's another one I made on my top tinted mineral SPF. Feel free to check those out if you want some recommendations but everyone should use a sunscreen at least SPF 30 plus. You also want to make sure it says broad spectrum meaning it blocks both UVA and UVB. If you're going to be out and about swimming or sweating a lot, you want to choose one that's water resistant. And if you have hyperpigmentation, then you want to choose one that's tinted so it protects your skin from visible light from the sun, which can actually worsen dark spots. After you finish your sunscreen application, then you can move on to the last step, which is your makeup and whatever you want to put on top of that. So to summarize, in the morning, you'll start with your optional cleanse, then your treatment for your targeted skin concerns, then your vitamin C antioxidant, an optional moisturizing step, sunscreen, and then optional makeup. So I know that seems like a lot of steps, but many of those steps are optional. In fact, half or more of those steps are optional. So you can tailor this to what you really need. Now that we've finished our AM routine, let's move into our PM nighttime skincare routine. Step one is to start with a really good cleanse. This is to help wash off all the oil, makeup, dirt, pollutants, grime on your face from going about your day. Now I prefer a double cleanse, which is starting with an oil-based cleanser and then following that up with a water-based cleanser. And the reason to use an oil-based cleanser is this concept of like dissolves like. So an oil-based cleanser is going to remove your water-resistant sunscreens, it's going to remove that heavy makeup, and then you wash it all off with a water-based cleanser. And I find that a double cleansing method really helps my skin get even cleaner and helps get all of those things such as water-resistant sunscreen and like really heavy, thick foundation totally off. This provides a nice fresh canvas for you to do your skincare on. I'll share some of my favorite double cleansing products below. After you've finished the first cleanse, which is the oil-based cleanser, then you can move on to your water-based cleanse and there's different types of cleansers as well. Gel cleansers tend to work better for acne or if you have oily skin and cream cleansers are really great if you have dry skin. There's also special medicated cleansers like benzoyl peroxide cleansers or salicylic acid cleansers and and those are better for oily or acne prone skin. So depending on your skin type and your skin concerns, you wanna choose a good cleanser for you. Now cleansers are one area that I don't think you need to really splurge on. I think that there are a lot of great affordable cleanser options out there. So this is one where if you are trying to figure out where to spend your money, you can save on this category. Step two of your nighttime routine would be any prescription medications you have or any active ingredient products that you're gonna use to treat specific skincare concerns. So this is the same as from the morning. Now, if you don't really have any skincare concerns, then you can think about putting your retinoid or your retinol here. Retinol or retinoids are vitamin A derivatives that are extremely, extremely useful and versatile in the world of skincare. They do a lot of things. They can help with acne, they can help normalize skin cell turnover, they can help exfoliate, they can help clean out your pores, improve the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, and they can also help with dark spots. 
and they can also build collagen. So the list just really goes on and on. Tretinoin is really our gold standard when it comes to using a retinoid, and that is a prescription. As wonderful as retinoids are, there are some side effects associated with it, and a lot of people undergo, most people undergo what's called retinoid dermatitis, where for six to eight weeks, your skin is gonna get pretty inflamed, irritated, peely, and red from your skin getting used to the retinoid. For some people, that adjustment period can be really tough. And I tell my patients, try to stick it out, it will get better. But in case you don't like retinoids or if you can't tolerate retinoids or retinol, this is the step where you would use other active ingredients if you wanna exfoliate or if you wanna treat specific skin concerns like rosacea, hyperpigmentation, etc. It would be during this step. After applying your active ingredient step, which usually includes your retinol or retinoid, then you would go on to the last step, which is moisturizer. And moisturizer is especially important if you are using a retinol or retinoid because your skin is going to be just so, so dry that you really need a moisturizer on top to help counteract the side effects of the retinoid. There's a lot of different moisturizers to choose from. And again, this can kind of go back to your skin type. If you have oily, acne prone skin, you may want to use more of a gel moisturizer that's more lightweight. If you have really dry skin or mature skin, you may want to look for a creamier or thicker moisturizer. And you may even think about using Vaseline as a very thin layer on top. That practice is known as slugging, and I have talked about slugging before as well. Now, an exception to this order that I just talked about is if you're just starting out with a retinoid and you have really dry or sensitive skin and putting retinoid on your bare skin is too much for your skin to handle, then you can do what I call the sandwich method where you do a layer of moisturizer, then a tiny pea-sized amount of retinoid on top of that for your whole face, and then moisturize on top of that again. So it's like a sandwich. You have your moisturizer, your retinoid, and then moisturizer on top. That would be one instance in which I say, you know, you can kind of switch up the steps of the skincare routine. So remember to listen to your skin. If you find that you're starting a new routine and your skin's getting really red, stinging, irritated, try to figure out what product that is. You can cut back on all the products you use, go on what I call a skin diet. And once your skin is clear, add back one skincare product every few days to see if you can identify the culprit. Now this is a general guideline for how to structure a good skincare routine, but as you get more familiar with using different products and experimenting with them, you can certainly change up the order of the steps and add in more steps. This is just a very good, simple, bare bones skincare routine. I hope this was helpful for you. Please leave any questions below. And if you have any ideas for future videos, I'm all ears. Until next time.